They're the Kambini boys. They're the Kambini boys. They're the Kambini. They're the Kambini. They're the Kambini. They're the Kambini boys. Hey, Mike. Matt, Matt, Matt. How's it going? <laughs> I'm on top of the world, Mike, because it's Saturday morning here and we're talking Kanbini. Even better, we're talking, we'll soon be talking Kanbini tournament. How about you? How are things over in Japan? Things are great, man. Um, things are better than ever, I got to say. Um, you know, this week, like you said, we're going to be talking about it soon. I know, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, hold up. <laughs> Just wait. Let us get through the opening. So we're going to be talking Kanbini tournament. It's been exciting, you know, it's been a dramatic week, excitement, you know, the highest of the highs, lowest of lowest the lows. Of lows. Um, <laughs> but uh, in general, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> it's just been a, yeah, it's been a great week. Excited to talk on Beanie. Uh, Matt, what do you say? You think we, we should just get on with it? Let's get on with it, Mike. And uh, as usual, we're going to start off with the Chicky Wars here. Big week in Chicky Wars, but we're going to try to yeah. move through it a little faster than usual because we do have Convenient Tournament action to talk about this week. Four new Chickies are wow. out. Yeah, big news here, Mike. And starting off out of Lawson, we have Karaage Kun, known flavor number 209. Mike, oh this is the Mentai Mayonnaise flavor Karaage Kun. Mm -hmm. uh mike you probably know how i feel about this but how do you feel about by the way this is out of hakata this is specifically hakata mentaiko mm -hmm. that's a area in kyushu known for its mentaiko yeah mentai mayo and you know that's a classic combination probably if you don't know much about japan you're probably thinking yeah you know, um, mentaiko, which is um, fish eggs combined with mayonnaise. That's a classic flavor. But Matt, what strikes me about this? It's a black box. You know what that means? This is a this is a top of the line version <laughs> of the karaage kun. Two hundred forty yen. You know, not my favorite. Well, I, I, you know, I don't mind the mentai mayo. Um, and so, you know, it's a black box. I gotta get in there and have it. How about you? I imagine you're you have different feelings about the old mentai mayo. No, I had apply social distancing to this one, Mike. Get no closer than six <laughs> feet with a mask on. I do like the box, as you say, black box with the Karaage Kun mascot desperately holding the mentaiko <laughs> and squeezing that mayonnaise bottle like his life depends on it. So uh, great, great design here from Lawson. Mm -hmm. um, okay, Mike, we got more chickies to talk about here. Yeah. So next yeah. up, out of family, Mark, oh boy. Mike, we hmm. got the quattro cheese in fami chicky that's right ladies and gentlemen this is a cheese in fami chicky quattro cheese in fami chicky that's a four cheese in fami chicky with cheddar gouda, <laughs> mozzarella and parmesan all Ooh. stuffed inside that fami chicky mike your thoughts on this one well, you know, we if you've been keeping up with the podcast, you know, we're looking for this, you know, the the legendary uh, cheese in chicky that's going to be able to do it right. Until now, they just haven't been able to pull it off. That chicky juice just overpowers <laughs> or mixes in a strange way with that cheese. So, Matt, you know what? I, I got to get in and see if this is the one. I got to be honest, I don't think it's going to be. You know, we love family chicky. We love cheese, but just been disappointed so many times so far. And, you know, it wasn't too long. It was only a couple months ago we had the, the cheese in family chicky. So I hope they're, they're really coming back with something good this time. What, what do you think? No, I appreciate the tenacity of the Family Mart, <laughs> Family Chicky development team. These guys are working like they're developing a Corona vaccine here, just desperately trying to make this cheese in recipe work. Haven't done it yet, but maybe here's the recipe. By the way, they're doing now set based cheese in engineering, Mike. <laughs> What I mean by that is they don't just have one cheese in product coming out this week. They got another one, okay? Oh. They got the triple cheese in poke chicky. Poke chicky, mm -hmm. of course, Family Mart's rival product to Karaage Kun's or Lawson's Karaage Kun. Mm -hmm. So we got chicken nuggets here, Mike, with three types of cheese inside the Karaage Kun. Any yeah. thoughts on this one? Oh, yeah. So um, you remember a couple weeks back, I made a proclamation at, my, uh, at the Gemba when I said, <laughs> we can just write off Poke Chicky. There's nothing to see here. No need to ever bring this up again. Well, Matt, I stand corrected. 
this is what Poke Chiki needed because um, Lawson, they did a similar thing with Karage Kun. They had the cheese in, and it works mm. well with the chicken nuggets. It doesn't work well with the chiki so far, but Matt, mm. I got to get in here and try this. But I will say, mm -hmm. if this fails, <laughs> then. We will. We might have to just ban Poke Chicky from the podcast. From the podcast. Wow. We can we can talk about it, but in in terms of the video, we're gonna have to blur out the image. I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know. What What do you think, Matt? What What are your thoughts on this one? Yeah, you know, Mike. Um, I have similar thoughts here. I mean, Karaage Kun. They're just so far ahead. Again, they're releasing concepts at this point. Mm -hmm. And uh, now we just have the cheese in Poke Chicky. Maybe, maybe this will allow it to just barely get back into the game. But right now, really, they're playing single A ball to Lawson's <laughs> major leagues. So they're going to have to have a big boost here to yeah. have any chance uh, at, at, at competing with Kata Age Kun. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. Mike, believe it or not, we still have one more chicky to go here. Oh, this yeah. is out of 7-Eleven, so all big three conveni have new chickies out this week. Um, oh, yeah. Here we have the big Nana Chicky oh. Herb flavor. Oh. Uh, so pretty easy. It's a big Nana Chicky with some herbs on it. Mike, mm -hmm. any thoughts on this guy here? Well, a couple things jump out just to start. 350 yen. Okay, so that's got to be – that's going to have to be a, a big chicky. And yeah. then the other thing that jumps out, I want your thoughts on this. One thing that we love when we did the taste test of all the chickies, and we love the Nana Chicky, was was its seasoning. Mm -hmm. And they're saying the herb flavor. I don't know. What are your thoughts? Does it need any change to the flavor? That's the only thing that sort of worries me. Well, you know, um, you figure it's got to have herb flavor in it anyway because mm -hmm. it's got all that seasoning on it. They don't really describe in the, de there's nothing in the description that, that points out exactly what herbs they're using. They're just saying <laughs> it's, it's, it's a proprietary spice blend. Yeah. Which is yeah. exactly what's on the regular Nana Chiki. So I, exactly. I have a feeling they may just be putting parentheses herb flavor on a regular Nana Chiki. Oh. Using it as a new product. This could be, this isn't even a modular play here, potentially by 7 Eleven. This is, uh, this could be a little smoke and mirrors here, I suspect. That's a good point. Maybe they're just trying to say, hey, this is different. But we know that flavor. I hope it's just that flavor. I hope it's just more of that flavor that we love. And, um, you know, have to give it a try. But 350 yen. That's pretty big, you know. That's three dollars and fifty cents for one old chicky. Mm. Yeah, we'll have to see. Um, I'm I'm excited to see what it what they've got, but um, yeah, nice to see them coming out with something as well. All right, Mike. Last up in the chicky news here, um, and I think we're gonna take a deeper dive into this next week. But mm -hmm. uh, shout out to Super Salary Man. He's Legend. done an incredible analysis of the Christmas time premium boning chicken across the big three Conveni and Kentucky fried chicken. We'll post a link to this on Twitter and in the show notes, but mm -hmm. the way he's broken this down, Mike, you know, I haven't seen something like this since, I don't know, maybe, uh, you know, this is kind of a Nate silver style analysis <laughs> of the bone in fried chickens, uh, uh, playing field here yeah yeah no this is uh this is big this is coming from the legend the man himself the super salaried man anyone who wants to see it go to super salaried man dot blogspot dot com follow him on twitter as well this guy is the legend he's our hero he's mm -hmm. you know one of the great inspirations for the show and um if anybody's going to break it down it's going to be him i'm sure you're going to have a huge article tons of information tons of cross sections but um yeah <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna pull it up. Uh, I think in a, in a couple of weeks, but um, yeah, man, what a what a week for the the chicky wars. All right, Mike. With that, uh, what do you say we head off to the scoreboard? All right, sounds good, Matt. So um, yeah, this week we're looking at the scoreboard, and I'm just gonna hit you with those numbers. We've got Family Mart sixty seven items, Lawson thirty nine items, and Seven Eleven with one hundred and thirteen items. Um, yeah, just about 200 new items from the convenience this week. Matt, any thoughts on those numbers? Everybody's playing right in their wheelhouses, so no, not much to say about the numbers this week, Mike. 
Yeah, no, I was hoping that we were going to see, you know, some more action like we talked about, but unfortunately, it seems like we're pretty, pretty standard. All right, Matt. So as always, we're going to look at our winners and losers for the week. And to start, let's just go ahead and just look at your loser for the week. So um, I'm going to throw it up on screen here. Matt, what are we looking at here? Yeah, Mike, this is a pepperoni and cheese pizza out of 7-Eleven. I posted this on Twitter actually yesterday, Mike. Um, hmm. I think it's a very generous use of the word pizza here, Mike. <laughs> uh, what we're looking at here is sort of a stale bread roll topped with tomato paste, maybe? Corn, a little bit of cheese, and I guess that's pepperoni, although it does just look like a scab. <laughs> on top of a bread roll mike this looks closer to a human head out of a microwave after about 35 minutes on max than it does a pizza uh, i can't say anything worse about this thing my goodness uh that's my loser for the week yeah matt uh this is not a bad in terms of um you're gonna pick a loser this is a loser right here like you said you got this this it's in the pack as well so you can imagine the sort of texture of that thing mm -hmm. they got the corn they got the pepperoni and you know as is as is often the case in japan we don't know if that's actually cheese or if that's mayonnaise that's on top <laughs> there um it's a it's a classic conundrum you never know is it cheese is it mayo you could have a whole yeah. game show of that so matt i totally understand Great pick um, for your loser of the week, uh, a, a true loser. All right, Matt, as for me this week, um, I got something for you, and I'm going to show you, boom. Ooh. We've looked at this many a time. Um, Matt, this is the Zone <laughs> Unlimited Zero 0500. As you can see, this is uh, digital performance energy. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, we talked about this a number of times and I still don't understand what this is. And I, I, this digital performance energy claim is very dubious to me. Obviously this is a, uh, you know, this is an energy drink, 500 milliliters. Um, mm. I just, you know, there's just not enough information. I really want to know what sort of, you know, digital performance I'm going to be enhancing when I drink this thing. Um, so yeah, you know, I've seen it so many times thought to pull it up a couple times, but, um, yeah, I finally thought I'd, you know, present it to our losers. We've got the zone unlimited zero. Um, <laughs> and that's my loser for the week. Matt, what are your thoughts on this, uh, this so, mystery item? So many confusing things about this product, Mike. First, the design itself, it's got this purple <laughs> galaxy with a C minus on it. It looks like you took a bunch of coding bros their design preferences ran it through some kind of uh, algorithm and this is the can it spit out you know just just <laughs> awful not sure what does unlimited zero mean yeah. wow confusing there and i see at the very top it says version 1.0 so presumably they'll have more versions of this coming out uh potentially even minor updates maybe they'll change the minus to a plus that'll be version 1.0 0.1 um yeah, yeah yeah looking forward to seeing how this product well actually i'm not but uh, i guess it will evolve over time yeah and we'll see like you said it's version 1.00 <laughs> so it had its first major release <laughs> who knows what it was like in the prototype stages i don't know probably a black hole of some sort all right matt enough of this Let's get on with our winners because that's what that's what everybody really is interested in seeing. So I'm going to just go ahead. We're looking at your winner for the week and boom, what are we looking at? All right, Mike, here's my winner for this week. This is the Kanikama Onigiri. Kanikama meaning imitation crab stick. Actually, Mike, you just educated me on that. I stupidly thought this was actually real crab. It's not. This Fair is enough. imitation crab I don't care. It's damn good. Yeah. I love imitation crab with a little bit of mayonnaise mixed in in the onigiri, Mike. And um, a lot of people might be a little bit turned off by it. The the image isn't so appetizing. Mm. Uh, the, the closest I could come to it, it kind of, I don't know if you're familiar with the game The Last of Us, Mike. <laughs> But yes. uh, it looks a little bit like a clicker, <laughs> the top half of a clicker <laughs> sort of face has exploded wide open, a little stringy, little red, little pink, little white. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
<laughs> so it doesn't necessarily look like the most appetizing onigiri, but gosh darn it, I do love it. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, Kanikama, I'm a fan as well. Um, actually, I remember when I was a young kid, I didn't really, I didn't actually know the difference. And um, my my cousin, he actually, there in the in the refrigerator, there was some Kanikama mm. and uh, the imitation crab meat, and he, you know. He made us pay a dollar for each bit of that Kanikama, but we did because it was so good. And so it, it has a strong place in my heart as well. And you're right. The the Onigiri Kanikama is one of the best. And mm. like you said, you wouldn't think even with that mayonnaise as well, but the mayonnaise at really adds something to it. So sure I say, I say good call. All right, Matt, on to my winner of the week. Mm -hmm. um, I think you're going to know this guy right here. So Ooh. this is a mm -hmm. advancing to round two oh, actually wow oh yeah oh yeah you see what i'm talking about advancing to round two of the combini tournament the classic choco pie but matt i oh think you god there's a key word right here oh, ice yeah. <laughs> and in japanese ice <laughs> means ice cream so Ooh. matt this is just a hey it's a choco pie ice cream Ooh. So, I mean, what else can I say? What do you think? Mike, I saw this item, and I, I looked at it hard. Not hard enough, though. I missed that word, ice, which is a huge, huge mm. word in this case. My <laughs> God, a choco pie ice, that looks outstanding. My favorite thing growing up, as long as we're talking childhood food stories, mm -hmm. was the Snickers ice cream bar. Mm. Exactly. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think this could be on par with the Snickers ice cream bar. You got that sheet toddy cake and that melty chocolate on the inside there, sandwiched mm. by ice cream. Oh boy, Mike, that looks darn good. What a winner this week. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for reminding me of Snickers ice cream. <laughs> now, if they still have that, I gotta get it. But anyways, Matt, all right. We got a we got a big show today. That wraps us up for the scoreboard this week. Um, now we're going in the main section. What everybody's you know excited about? We're talking Combini tournament, right? That's right, Mike. So round one is finally in the books. We spent all week launching the thirty-two matches for round one of the tournament, mm -hmm. and now we're on to round two. Yeah, Mike. There's a lot to talk about. Probably too lot. much to talk about about yeah. this tourney. But I think we just want to take a look at some of the key matchups. My bracket, I'll tell you right now, it's already busted. I'm yeah. in big trouble. <laughs> and then we got some we got some big time matchups coming up in round two, Mike. Some of these were pretty easy going in. I mean, yeah. we saw Fami Chicky absolutely destroy Ham Katsu in round Destroyed. one. No surprise there. But what's yep. gonna happen when Fami Chicky goes up against Karaage Kun, Karaage -kun. baby? Oh, Can Fami Chicky withstand 209 known flavors? Of Karaage Kun, I don't know, Mike, and I, I gotta know. tell you, I'm scared as hell about Kanbini Coffee beating Yasai Seikatsu. That's gonna potentially set up a matchup in round three with Can Coffee, assuming Can Coffee can beat Elohas Water in I round two. Yeah. Elohas, my God, how did it do that? Beat Highball. <laughs> what are we talking about here, people? I don't know. I don't know. That was a huge ups. Well. In terms of seeding, not a huge upset, but in terms of I, what I thought was going to happen, especially some of the feedback we were getting, I thought, yeah, Highball might have been making it all the way to the Final Four, absolutely. if not taking it. We, we had saw some people Highball, taking it. Final Four taking it, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, Matt, there's some huge matchups coming up. There's Pizza Man versus American Dog oh, coming up. God almighty. Are you kidding me? That's going to be triple over time, quadruple <laughs> over time. I, <laughs> I have no idea. I will say, as we mentioned last week, I had beef jerky going to the final four, <laughs> completely smoked by Black Thunder. And um, the really, the, the real crusher for me this week, and I know, I know you know what I'm talking about. We're talking about the guy I had going to the final four from the meal division, my, one of my favorite top three items, the meat sauce pasta absolutely obliterated it was a <laughs> shutout against oyakodon 
meat sauce pasta did not get one vote um so that was uh soul crushing for me matt well uh on the plus side mike oyako don's gonna be going up against umeboshi onigiri in round two and i suspect a real smackdown by umeboshi onigiri to <laughs> oyako don so hopefully you'll be able to get a bit of revenge there in round I, two i hope meat sauce but, pasta i hope but I, you know what i don't even know now could right. could it take out Umeboshi Onagiri? Is that would be one of the Oyako Don? Up no, that would be again. That's similar to uh, that's a Holy Cross Duke situation. I just don't <laughs> see that happening, Mike. And you know, just again back to our senior analyst, now official senior analyst. I don't that's know if right. You saw the press release. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, but PJ OMC talking about oyako oyako don that's not necessarily something you would normally go to the convenient to get you know right. you typically go to a restaurant um mm -hmm. to get oyako don yeah uh umeboshi onigiri that is that is you know one of the foundational foods of the konbini right up there with the fami chicky right up there with the oden you know yeah. right up there with the i would even Whoa. say meat sauce pasta thank you well hey wait you just said something that is the <laughs> other huge ripple throughout this tournament <laughs> devastating my bracket and my mys as well i know yours as well you know what i'm talking about matt something i don't even think the craziest of you know nostradamus could not have seen this that was the walloping of oden by tsukune when yeah. tsukune for our you know yeah. people who don't know it's just uh it's chicken balls on a stick chicken it's not it, nobody goes excited to the convenience to get a tsukune and completely walloped oden you know mike i'm suspecting foul play here um you know we talk about uh george soros bussing in protesters <laughs> i think i think the uh the lobby against oden may have uh been up to some no good some some dirty mm -hmm. tricks Mm -hmm. to get Oden mm -hmm. out of the tournament. Like you said, this was a walloping, which just doesn't make any sense. In fact, the first bracket we saw by yeah. a Japanese guy had Oden winning the whole damn thing. Yeah. And here we are, round two, nowhere to be found, beaten by Tsukune. By the way, Tsukune is going to be going up against... Let's take a quick Curry look man. here. Curry, Curry man. man. Yeah, I can't wait for Curry Man to just smoke that thing. In which yeah. case, we why? But that's another story here, Mike. We could have three mans in oh, round three. Oh boy. my goodness! Holy hell! Yeah, look at this. Yeah, some of these matchups. You're right. Oh, one other I'd like to say is that um, Hyoketsu Chuhai going yeah, out was uh, lost to Oi Ocha Green Tea. Um, you know that was that was one of the most that was one of the toughest fights in this first round. And um, Hyoketsu going out was, you know, that's going to kill some people's brackets. Whereas, you know, if Oyocha would have lost, that would have killed people's brackets. That was a, that was a real critical uh, battle. Sad to see it go, but, um, you know, uh, I don't know. What, 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 uh, what did you have Hyoketsu doing? I had Hyoketsu uh, losing to Ukon no Chikara, so you can tell my bracket is totally busted in the yeah, drink division. Yeah, Neither of those <laughs> even made it to round chance. two. <laughs> I know Mai Mai's bracket, Karen's bracket, they had Hyoketsu Chuhai, I believe, mm -hmm. going to the championship round, never mind the final four here. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think brackets are busted all over because oh. of that loss by Hyoketsu Chuhai. And yeah, one more that I'd like to shout out, one that's um, a lot of people were really keeping an eye on, and that was our beer matchup. That's right. And uh, that was Kirin Ichiban versus Asahi Super Dry, Asahi Super Dry, and Matt. Um, Kirin Ichiban took it. Yeah, Mike, it was a slugfest, though. Um, yeah. You yeah. know, it was a it, it, Kirin edged Asahi Super Dry. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But thank God for that, because everybody knows Asahi Super Dry in a can, pretty much trash out of the oh. draft. Ooh. Well, uh, yeah, I actually had it going to the next round, so I don't Asahi know. Asahi Super Dry. Yeah, I agree. You know, you know. Hey, we seeded this thing together. I'm a Kirin Ichiban <laughs> guy, but 
this is how the Kambini tournament works. You know, I got in there and I thought, well, you know, what is the iconic can? Well, yep. that's probably the Asahi Super Dry. Yep. So it had me pick it. So anyways, that was our big beer matchup of the of the tournament. You know, um, that's the only one left. Noto Goshi, Goshi uh, Happosho also lost. So that's the lone beer remaining. Lone so we'll see what beer happens. beer remaining. And um, speaking of beverages here, Mike, uh, two matches that I'm going to be looking at hard in round two. We got mm -hmm. canned coffee going up against Elohas, and then we have Kanbini drip coffee going up, up against Kirin Ichiban, which means we could have a canned coffee, Kanbini drip coffee showdown in round three. Mike, I might have a mental breakdown <laughs> if that happens because I just don't know. I got canned coffee going through this whole thing, but I didn't. Yeah. I didn't expect Kanbini drip coffee. It would make it so far that that it would actually face canned coffee in this tourney. But I think it's likely now. Yeah, yeah. No, there's so many tough matchups coming up. I'm I'm worried about looking ahead to Pokari Sweat versus Strong Zero. Oh. Yeah, I, was, I mean, these are these are really uh, really tough. You know, that's looking a little bit ahead beat you know if pokari sweat can beat oyocha green tea i don't know maybe it can it probably actually won't so that's uh you know i'm, I'm gonna that's gonna be a nail biter for me but um yeah man any anything else that sticks out with you or uh you know you no um you know i think i think round one it was a lot of clear easy decisions i think though round two here it's going to get heated. This is where yeah. these matchups are going to get tighter and tighter. And I suspect more people are going to be voting because mm -hmm. there's 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 going to be more intensity now heading into round two. Yeah, no, I agree. So everyone, yeah, thank you all so much for, you know, voting. And um, please, like, for these next rounds, if you could throw in the votes, makes it a lot more fun. Um, and we, we really want to try and, you know, determine the true winner of the uh, the Combini tournament. Well said, Mike. Yeah, thanks, everybody. All right, Matt. Well, you know, we uh, we had her back for a couple weeks and then we missed her for a week. But um, thankfully, back this week, we've got the spicy commentator. And um, I'm happy to say, Matt, actually, she, uh, if you remember a couple weeks back, we talked about that drama where they were releasing these mm -hmm. uh, these sweets that they released in the drama. Actually, in Seven Eleven was partnering to release actually real versions of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so uh, this week, the the second uh, the second version, the second item came out, and Mai Mai got her hands on it. So let's take a listen to her review of that. Hey guys, hey Matt. Today, I'll introduce Koisuru Kayobi no Gokujo Pan Pudding. In English, Maple Syrup Bread Pudding from 7 Eleven. This is the second item from the Kono Koi Atatame Maska Konbini Drama. This item, we went to find it in the morning. So it only took two convenience to find it. When you open the lid, it has a good maple syrup smell. The whipped cream looked really delicious. The texture is really thick. It's more like French toast than pudding. Pudding and French toast are two of my favorite sweets but I didn't like this. It's too heavy. My score is two stars. I'm looking forward to the next Konbini Drama Suites. Wow, Mike, two out of five stars. Um, I gotta tell you, I'm not so surprised by that. Bread pudding, as I understand, is not common in Japan, and I could see yeah. some of the some of the uh disconnect between it, it's not pudding pudding is a yeah. bad word for it we just happen to call it bread pudding it is much closer to french toast than it is bread pudding yeah i had i had never really had bread pudding myself and i i totally agreed um uh i'd like to you know maybe try it not at the convenience some point um just to sort of have a you know a point of comparison but um yeah you know the 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 
spicy commentator this week she's back out swinging two stars um so brutal like she said you know looking forward to the next item they release and i'm sure we'll have her back on for that can't wait Okay, Mike, uh, back, we're bringing back quickly a segment called What's the Call on the Hall? This mm-hmm. is really a shout out to somewhat JP, aka Alex. Uh, he's been in our Conveni Mentor program now for one <laughs> month. And Mike, he pulled out a haul this past week that was absolutely stunning. It was yeah. pizza chips. Karaage kun regular kakiage soba, which he purchased at your recommendation. Oh, uh, two tall boys and a melty kiss, Mike. This was just—you've uh, used the word elegant to describe halls in the past. I think that is the appropriate term, elegant. I gave this one five stars. Unfortunately, didn't get enough votes to make it into the Kambini Hall of Fame. But uh, we're going to try to give it a final push to see if it can't get into the hall. Yeah. Um, no, I'd just like to say, Alex, you know, thank you for all your efforts, you know, working hard at, you know, improving your halls. And I got to say, I agree with Matt. That's a five star <laughs> hall right now. This guy, he's one of the fastest rising in the circuit. There's no doubt about it. Um, you know, uh, I, I'm just really happy that he's been able to get to the place where he can pick up these five star halls and you know um but yeah man alex he's also has his own uh youtube channel and yep. uh he's actually yeah he, he does some cool videos he's a fellow developer and he, he does he had uh, one video that was talking about like how to uh talk about programming in in japanese so that was pretty cool and he's also just got some you know uh some other videos as well so definitely check him out there check out somewhat jp on youtube and twitter this guy he is going to be the next, uh, you know, Kambini star. He's going places. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Matt. Well, hey, you know, it's coming to the end of the show. And um, a couple weeks back, we were graced from the gods, the Kambini gods, with our first ever call in to the show. <laughs> and after that, we were followed up two weeks in a row with another call in from Joe and a great Kambini memory. And this week, Matt, we've got a new Kambini out. Wow. Um, I think we should uh, just go ahead and take a listen. This is Casey from the Bean Pod in Ishikawa Summit to see. He's going to be sharing his Kambini memory, so let's take a listen. Hey guys, this is Casey here to share my Kambini memory with you. Uh, if there are two things that are true in the world, it is that uh, small children are vectors for disease. Mm. And uh, you haven't really experienced Japan until you've defiled a Kambini toilet and those two worlds collided for me about six years ago. I was cruising down the road with my one-year-old son in the car seat when I uh, felt that familiar noro tickle in my stomach and I had to pull over to the nearest Lawson, leave the baby in the car, power power walk my way through the doors. Fingers crossed that the toilet would be vacant, and uh, and I made it in there and released the liquid green noro poop. Uh, and then I was puking a few hours later. That's my oh, convenient oh, memory. Oh, man. I'm sorry. Oh, wow. Man. Oh, Casey, wow. <laughs> Got the noro virus. You know, one of the hardest hitting viruses out there. Oh, man. That was... <laughs> Everybody's been there. And I got to say, for the people who don't live in Japan, this is something you got to understand. Matt, we might actually, this this podcast might go long. It doesn't matter if you're going to the Kambini, you get into that toilet and it's a solid toilet. This is a, this is not pooping out at your, your park out by your home. This is a solid toilet. So I imagine, Casey, I know that this is a, this is a tough situation to be in, but when you finally got there, you got to be feeling pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, I had Kambini toilets. They sort of doubled as a mobile office for me um, because I was often inside them, getting a lot of work done in there. They they truly are fantastic. And everybody, I'm sure, has a story about just absolutely wrecking a Kambini toilet. Um, But, you know, it really is one of the great things about Japan. No matter where you go, there's a clean toilet nearby because there's a kombini Mm -hmm. nearby. Um, And you really haven't lived until you've heard 
an anxious young Japanese <laughs> pounding on the door, <laughs> desperate to get in while you're wrapping up your business in the conveni toilet. Oh, Great memory, yeah. Casey. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for calling in, Casey. And actually, we're going to, I think if everything goes according to plan, we're going to be joining Casey and Joe That's on right. the Kawa Summit to See podcast next week. Really pumped about that. And uh, yeah, so thanks so much, man. Um, yeah, and uh, check out Casey on Twitter. He's at the Bean Pod. Casey is often posting some really often awesome uh, photography of where yeah. he lives. It's uh, genuinely quite uh, awesome photos that he posts of beautiful mm-hmm. countryside in Ishikawa. Uh, and he's got a podcast called The Bean Pod, and then another podcast with uh, Joe from Corporage called Summit to See. So check those out. Yep. All right, Matt. So, wow. What an exciting episode. I mean, we had we had it all. We had tears, we had laughs, we had, you know, we had some pretty serious moments as well, but somehow, you know, we made it through. So, um, Matt, I guess that wraps us up for this week. So, yeah, everyone, just uh, thank you so much for listening to all our podcast listeners, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, you know, leave us a, a like and, you know, share and rate our podcast. It really helps people find the show. If you're watching the video, you know, give us a like or check us out on the video. Give us a subscription. You know, that would be great as well. Um, and, uh, yeah, we're also on all the social networks. We're on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Been really active on Twitter, and that's where we're posting a lot of stuff about the Combini tournament. So if you want to keep up to date with that, check us out on Twitter. And if you have a Combini memory, um, you know, please, you know, visit our website our, uh, at anchor.fm. We're the Combini boys. You should be able to find us. And you can just click the button that says leave a message and leave your message or your Combini memory, and that'll be great. Um, all right, Matt. Yeah, everybody, just thanks for listening. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll uh, see you at the Combini. I'll see you at the Convini, Mike. <laughs>